Welcome Chris and Jason. Uh, Chris is a mobile QA animation manager at uh, Prodigy and Jason is a QA manager. Is a QA manager. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Uh, you guys help me. Oh, yeah. We have just four simple questions for you. And the first one, um, what are you looking for in a candidate? But let's imagine that the candidate already passed the phone screen with the recruiter, right? So he has like some career that he passed. And then he goes to you with the phone screen, uh, with a phone interview or face-to-face -face interview. So what are you looking for in that candidate? Uh, for me, it's really, really important that you guys come with energy and willingness to learn. Uh, what we do is kind of, it's hard to say, it's not, it's not very specific. Every day, every day is going to change. You follow a set pattern, but you're going to be finding new things every day, and you're not going to know all the answers. How are you going to get those answers? Are you going to ask me every day for the answer, or are you going to try and find it yourself? So the willingness to learn and really do the research is going to help you a long way. Okay. Um, yeah, to basically reiterate, uh, we, we usually look for people that um, are able to learn um, and are willing to learn new things. Um, when I started here, I had no idea of um, how to run a query for a database, or even run a database, um, and now I can do all of that. Um, it, it's, yeah, it, basically it's someone's ability to learn, um, and think on their feet. Essentially, we, we usually put someone in a situation um, where they're not familiar with something, and we kind of like to pick up their brain and see you know, how they think, um, what is it that they're trying to understand, kind of thing. Uh, OK, how about uh, your favorite? Do you have any favorite uh, interview questions? <laughs> That would be very helpful. <laughs> <laughs> um, all right, well, somebody asked me this, and like, I, I was kind of caught off guard for a bit, but then I kind of had fun with it. So, I don't know, this was like five or so years ago. Somebody asked me, would you rather QA one horse-sized duck or a hundred duck-sized horses? <laughs> Uh, for me, if, if you were to interview with me, my, my first question is always going to be, I'm going to give you a screenshot of a login page, and I'm going to ask you to give me 10, 15, 20 test cases off that login page. Um, it's, it's a quick, really fast way to weed people out that don't know or have never done it. So if you study that and you come in and you can give examples, that's really going to get you a lot further. Yeah, that, that's like yeah, one of the things where we put you in a situation to think on your feet. Uh, that's definitely like a question you'd ask, like just to see like these people are prepared, kind of thing. Do you have less favorite questions? Uh, Different ones than those? Uh, at least favorite. Questions. At least oh, at least favorite. I, I wanted to ask a least favorite question. <laughs> <laughs> like that, I think things you mean like uh, things that I wouldn't want somebody to respond or yeah. somebody to ask you. Right. So. When, when I'm interviewing people, come in prepared for the interview. Figure out where you're working and what they do and why they want to do it, so that way you can come and find out why you want to do it. If you come in and you don't know what the company does, it's really a huge turnoff to a lot of people who do interviews. It's, you, you're coming here because you want to work here. Is it paycheck or is it you enjoy the field? Is it you understand our mission? And if you don't understand our mission, then there's a serious problem because you don't even know why you're really doing the work. That's a good one. That's a good one. Always do your homework, obviously, right? Uh, yeah, you basically. <laughs> <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> All right, let's go uh, with the third question. Uh, what are the red flags for you uh, when you interview the candidate? Um, well, mm, well what, what are the things? that I always catch is that, um, for example, when we're putting those people in those hot situations, we're like, uh, think of like 10, 10 test cases at once. Um, uh, one, one thing that I always look out for is to see 
if, if people can get bored of the interview. I, I, I know that sounds kind of strange, but essentially, um, if people that are not interested in QA tend to not be interested in, in figuring things out. Um, when, when we put you in these tough situations, um, you can easily suss out people that um, are actively thinking of, of ways to test something, rather than somebody who is just interested in you know, pulling off the interview. Awesome. Right. I don't know if I think that makes sense. Uh, can, you give, can you give a resume tips and hints? Especially like uh, what, what will catch your eye in the resume, right? Which will be worth of picking from the bunch of other resumes. Um, I think I'll think of it. Okay, so for me, don't put it all on the paper. Uh, it sounds weird, but I want to be able to, as an interviewer, ask you a question. So if you know a bug tracking system, don't say specifically all the time. Put it in your skills. I know Jira. But I want to ask you what development methodologies do you understand? Um, so that way we can tie up a discussion about it. I can understand your feelings on it. And um, it, it's another good way to kind of understand how we'll work together. So if, if you say, uh, I've worked in a waterfall environment, or I've worked in an agile environment, and I say, well, tell me what waterfall means to you. How did you do that process at where you were previously? And you tell me, well, it was really a miserable process and I'm using waterfall. That's going to be trouble for both of us. But at least we figured that out early on. We didn't have to struggle through that. So it's, it's one of those things that I use to kind of gauge people. And if you tell me everything to, up front, uh, then I've got a book to read. So we're trying to kind of have a discussion more than a, just a piece of paper. And I, I think that the discussion is a lot more valuable. Uh, yeah, and to, to add to that, essentially, uh, don't lie on your resume. Um, if you put on your resume that you're familiar with Selenium, we're going to buzz you about that. Um, so be prepared to answer all the questions, or answer anything that you put on your resume. And, and don't try to to sugarcoat it or anything. If you don't know it, don't bother putting it on there. All right. And we have three more gift cards for the good questions. Yeah. OK, we have one. You don't have to give you a So this is for interview process. Um, say this is an entry level QA position, and then uh, you have a candidate that's can fit like all your requirements, but they are socially inept. And then you have another guy that's willing to learn, can probably, it can probably work with the devs, speak with them, and then back up any you know, QA bugs that they have. Who would you decide to pick on? Do you want to answer that? I don't know if it's okay. uh, for, Like I said, for me uh, personally, learning is more important. Um, at, I can get anybody to the level of where we can work well together and understand the process and coach you through it. Uh, that's our job, and if we can't do that, then we're failing as managers to be able to not teach you what you're doing. Yeah. Um, to add to that, I, 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 wouldn't, um, I wouldn't hire anybody socially inept uh, for many reasons. One is that um, since QA, you are interacting with a bunch of different teams. You, you, you're kind of like the bridge between development and product and, and customer service and anyone else who's going to be interacting with the product, right? Um, and, and in order for it to be effective at that, you need to be able to have the inter inner personal skills of interacting with other people. Um, if, if you feel like you're socially inept, um, you're going to have a lot harder time um, than anybody else. I, I put more emphasis on the fact that you, you're you know, fun or, or nice to work with, right? I, I don't want to be working with somebody who's grumpy all the time or uh, can't convey uh, issues to me, right? But if they have guys in the you could see like this guy could possibly be an engineer. And he should be an engineer. <laughs> <laughs> but he needs a book. <laughs> Anybody else? Okay. Hello. Um, what should the candidate ask you on the interview to be special in your eyes? 
I always like it um, when people ask me like more personal related questions of like how do they like working here or what is my day to day. Um, it, it gives me a moment to like I don't know kind of gush about the the place that I'm working at and also gives them an idea of what it like what it'd be like to work here. And uh, for me, like I said, it's all about the discussion. I really like to hear what you have to say about your field. It really tells me a lot when you know what you're talking about. And that's the easiest way to find that out. It's good. Yeah. Before you get to the interview process, how do you convey, or what kind of data points or metrics do you use to tell your, whoever your manager is, that I need this resource? How do you get to that process? before getting to the interview process to be able to open up that, uh, that conversation to actually get the interview. So um, the requisitions are, are kind of a metrics thing that I wasn't really prepared to handle, but what, what I do um, is I record our, our test runs. In, uh, we use TestRail to do so. And what that does is it allows us to tell uh, product and management how long it takes to execute a, a series of tests. And if they you know, stress to us, well, we need that faster, then we can have the conversation of additional resources. Um, to try and just add resources isn't something that you can do quickly. It's usually something over time. Um, but you know, it also determines how long you need to um, have that resource. Because it's a lot easier, oftentimes, to say, Oh, we just need to get things out for the holidays. Well, let's bring on a couple people as contractors. If you want somebody long term, then you've got to make that long term um, pitch for another person so that you can give them the metrics that they need to make it the cost analysis. Yeah, it's okay. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Last question. Two. Uh, yes, yeah, so this is for the interview process. Um, what are the top three things you look for in an entry-level candidate? Sure. Uh, so number one is willingness to learn. Number two would be uh, easy to talk to. and um, Like I said, the discussion is really important to me uh, specifically. I want to be able to have a conversation and gauge your willingness to tell me the truth and your Willingness to handle a difficult situation, which almost all interviews are. Nobody has ever gone to an interview and been like, ooh, that was really easy. I wish I could do that again. No, it's, it's a lot more um, discussion-based and you being able to communicate to me your needs and me being able to communicate to you my needs and seeing if we can meet in the middle of that. Jimmo? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, to reiterate, uh, the important thing is the willingness to learn because uh, on the job you're going to be coming across a lot of situations and, and so software defects that you've never encountered before. Um, so your ability to analyze those kinds of situations and, and understand what the bug is, uh, it's, which is usually pretty telling in the interview, um, your ability to um, dissect an issue and, and, and be meticulous about it. Uh, it's usually pretty obvious. Like if somebody's passionate about something, they'll get more into detail of, of what they're talking about. Or if we're if we're giving them an example of like, hey, find write up some test cases for this thing that we have here. Um, you can really tell like they're passionate about what they're doing. Um, and if, if, of course, if they're passionate, that's definitely the kind of person I'm looking for. All right, let's give applause to the gentleman.